Uh, hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. After a couple of great days for Bitcoin, guys, we are now seeing a, a bit of a stalling out for Bitcoin price right now as of the time of this recording. So on Saturday, yesterday, if you guys are watching this video on the day that I'm recording it, we did see a Bitcoin price spike to the upside, but uh, Friday actually was a better day for Bitcoin. Now we're actually seeing a bit of a retracement. Bitcoin trading currently in and around $62,700. Uh, as you guys can see here, we're monitoring these higher lows. So hopefully we, uh, you know, we can stay above these higher lows. The other thing that we're paying attention to at this point are these higher highs on the Bitcoin chart. So this is the daily time frame. Uh, I'm not going to bother looking at the hour to hour. It's been six months, over six months now, since Bitcoin has just been, uh, well, pretty much trending sideways. And uh, you can see it here. I mean, uh, I've been looking at charts uh, for, uh, well, the better part of my adult life. And uh, you guys can see this. I'm starting to see patterns that are denoting an uptrend for Bitcoin. So uh, that is just one of them. I mean, one of the major ones, I think the most important one is the uh, higher lows, higher highs. And so once we transition into that new higher high, guys, basically Bitcoin has to get up above this level here. That is the next test for the King Crypto in order for us to see some more movement to the upside. And that would be at $66,500 per coin. Sentiment is maintaining too. We're seeing 46 at neutral. We've got the market cap up to 2.18 trillion. That's down by a little bit. Uh, volume is down by a little bit too, by 29.9%. Bitcoin dominance slowly creeping down to 56.6. I think it was closer to 57 the other day. Uh, so altcoins, guys, gaining a little bit of steam, albeit not by much. We're not seeing uh, too much inflows into the market currently. But here's something that I wanted to point out to you from not financial advice stock crypto. So we have all these exchanges tweeting pics of green lasers shooting into the sky recently, when meanwhile the Royal Observatory shoots a green laser into the sky, and it's called the Meridian Laser, and they're doing this every night in London. And get this guys, the Stellar Foundation is hosting a conference in three days in London called, you'll never guess, yes, it is called Meridian, located just six miles from the Royal Observatory. So. Here's what he is noticing here from Bitstamp, from BitTrue, Poloniex, Crypto.com, all posting these green laser picks. And apparently the Stellar Foundation is hosting an event, Meridian 2024 in London. Things that make you go, hmm. Now, the reason I bring up XLM, and I know I don't talk a lot about XLM on this, uh, on this channel, uh, not by any means, is that it follows XRP quite closely. So if we can assume that uh, just by extrapolating, if XLM does rally, well, wouldn't that mean that XRP would rally too? So um, just to give you guys an example, this is the XRP chart on the daily. And I just wanted to show you guys during the XRP lawsuit, we did see, look at that, a huge move to the downside for XRP. Now that was in and around December 20. 20, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 2020. Okay, and this was in the midst of a bull run, okay? I just wanna show you guys XLM, how closely XLM was following XRP at that point in time. So let's go back to that uh, back to that time there. There we go, December uh, 22nd, look at that, 23rd, look at that cascading downward for a cryptocurrency that wasn't even under scrutiny by the SEC. Again, that was the time that the SEC announced the lawsuit against Ripple and XRP. XLM followed that trend. When we take a look at some other cryptocurrencies, some, uh, well, let's, let's look at some main cryptocurrencies that were uh, very prominent uh, at the end of 2020, like Ethereum. Uh, let's just go back, whoops, let's go back to 2020 here. Uh, we're, we're not seeing that same kind of correlation. I mean, the market did uh, correct generally just because of the lawsuit, but not by a lot. I mean, that is Ethereum in comparison. Let's take a look at BNB coin because uh, that was another uh, large coin with a large market cap at that point in time. Uh, so December, late December 2020 was in and around here. So that was around the same time. So yeah, it did go down a little bit, but not by nearly as much as XLM or XRP. The other interesting correlating factor too that I wanted to just uh, show you guys on the XLM chart was this uh, in and around the time that the um, that uh, XRP got clarity, okay, in in Ju uh, January, excuse me, J uh, July of 2023, that was in and around here. And guys, you would think that this is the XRP chart. No, this is the XLM chart. So um, you know, you compare that to XRP, it's got uh, it's got quite the correlation. I would even argue that maybe XLM went up higher than XRP. Let's check that out. XLM, uh, whoops, XLM. Uh, yeah, this is the XLM chart. And so what do we get on? Uh, right, it was the 13th, 14th. It was in and around that time frame there. 
uh, let's give it the, let's call it the 13th. Okay. This day here, uh, XLM went up 105% from bottom to top. Uh, XRP, I think it was in and around the same amount. If my memory serves me correctly here, uh, about 101%. So yeah, actually XLM did outperform XRP when XRP, not XLM, was declared not a security. So things that make you go, hmm, I wonder if this is going to mean that, uh, you know, we are going to see some bullish momentum for the two cryptocurrencies that the World Bank has deemed stable coins in the coming days. I mean, because this is happening uh, a couple of days from now, 15th to the 17th of October. So we're going to keep an eye on that, guys. Wendy O posting this, Google removing Bitcoin price from its search tells you one thing and one thing only. Now, some people were asking, Wendy, what does that mean? Uh, and she put down here the C word. She's being uh, quite cryptic in this tweet thread, uh, basically stating control. Google is not listing uh, the price anymore. And I don't know if this has to do uh, with the fact that we are going to see retail flood into the space. And maybe, uh, you know, maybe it's, uh, it's, it's an attempt by the powers that be that, uh, you know, they want to control the crypto sector. They do not want to see us all FOMO in once we do see Bitcoin prices start to rally. Here, I'll just show you guys here. If I type in, oh, not Google, Bitcoin price, uh, it used to have a price that would show up here and not anymore. So very interesting observation there from Wendy. I think we will see something uh, explosive happen in and around the time of the election or maybe even after, guys. Crypto Insight UK posting this, a controversial opinion. If Trump wins, I don't think it'll be as bullish as you think. If Harris wins, I don't think it'll be as bearish as you think. And, uh, you know, this kind of uh, piggybacking on the uh, on the video I did yesterday, if you guys didn't catch that, I will link it up here in the top right hand corner. Chris Larson did just donate one million dollars worth of XRP to the Harris campaign. So he goes on to say, if I think Trump, uh, if, if uh, uh, sorry, I think if Trump wins, there will be an instant hype pump and then uh, it'll take uh, a while until things continue. If Harris wins, there will probably be a pullback, but I think it'll push back through all time highs after the dust does settle. So um, I don't know, an interesting kind of a, maybe a bit of a conservative take on this. Wanted to thank Crypto Insight UK just for posting that. Guys, I also happen to notice this from Eisenreich, okay? VeChain, one of those cryptocurrencies, part of my legacy portfolio, but also part of the $15,000 plus portfolio that you can find over there at patreon.com slash working money channel. Yeah, that's where I'm uh, opening up my portfolio, my plan, my strategy, you know, the crypto exchanges I'm going to be using so on and so forth for this particular bull run, because I think it's going to look different than other bull runs. It is only $5 a month. If you guys want to join patreon.com slash working money channel, but let's get back to this. Grayscale is actually considering VeChain, the vet token as part of an institutionally offered product over there. So assets under consideration and current products. Okay. This is a, a, an update from Grayscale just from a, a few days ago from October the 10th. Uh, and if you take a look down here, okay, assets currently in the Grayscale suite of products. Of course, we know uh, the main cryptocurrencies there, Stellar's XLM and XRP on the list. And then smart contract platforms, they've just listed a few down here, uh, financial platforms, a few uh, cryptocurrencies here that they're also looking into. And I've uh, I've noticed too that uh, a lot of these coins are included in my $15,000 plus portfolio. I've already chosen these and they're still actually at a, a pretty good discounted price right now. Utility and service cryptocurrencies, guys, includes VeChain. So the VET token, one of these cryptocurrencies now that's under consideration by Grayscale. So I have a feeling, you know, we're going to start to see more of these, uh, you know, more of these institutional products come about and maybe why this is, uh, you know, why they're trying to corral us uh, not to look so much at the cryptocurrencies themselves, but into the institutional products. And, uh, you know, maybe this is why Google is uh, trying to control the narrative. Things that make you go, hmm, for sure. Anyway, I wanted to thank Eisenreich there for pointing that out. Now, Ripple was just named this year's Tear Sheet Power of Payment winner for Best Fiat Crypto Payments Company. So uh, this came out the other day. Thought I would report on it today, though. This year's winners include Intuit QuickBooks, Ripple, NMI, and Airwallex. Uh, and you guys can see it down here. Best Fiat and Crypto Payments Company is Ripple. They have earned Tear Sheet's Best Fiat Crypto Payments Award for its innovative blockchain-based solution that bridges traditional finance and cryptocurrency. Their technology offers instant, low-cost, cross-border settlements addressing long-standing inefficiencies in the global payment sector with a network spanning over 55 countries. So these are uh, up-to-date uh, numbers here, 55 countries and facilitating billions of dollars in transactions. Ripple has demonstrated significant market impact. 
recent partnerships and the announcement of their RLUSD stablecoin showcase their commitment to the evolution of global accessibility. Ripple's focus on regulatory compliance and securing critical licenses worldwide cements their position as a trusted leader in enterprise blockchain and crypto solutions, making them a deserving recipient of this award. So Ripple, along with uh, some other uh, companies here, Airwallex, which is, of course, a Ripple partner. Uh, we've got uh, QuickBooks, NMI, uh, and a few others here, guys, have won this award. Now, speaking of Airwallex, they are increasing their footprint in Hong Kong. Airwallex did announce that Airwallex Capital is now licensed by the Security and Futures Commission of Hong Kong in order to offer asset management services, paving the way for the upcoming launch of their Airwallex yield in Hong Kong early next year. So check this out. Uh, this is going to boost returns on their multi-currency uh, funds via Airwallex's capital investment into highly rated money market funds with decades of strong performance. Uh, they're looking to grow their multi-currency balances uh, without having uh, to open a foreign bank account and also to avoid lockup periods, hence easily moving funds between cash balances and their Airwallex yield account whenever needed to keep growing the business. So it sounds as though they are leveraging the RippleNet technology in order to be able to, uh, you know, have these uh, FX transactions occur seamlessly and frictionless. I get the sense that this license is going to open up some new doors for Airwallex, as Arnold Chan does uh, point out here. Uh, he said that Airwallex is proud to have received the license, of course. Uh, he added that this makes Airwallex the first global payments group to obtain such a license in Hong Kong. And guys, they are Ripple enabled. So uh, that's going to open the door. Like I say, open the door for Airwallex to, uh, you know, move probably beyond cross-border payments, but using the, uh, you know, the, the efficiency of the XRP level Ledger, the DLT technology that is RippleNet to uh, perform these transactions seamlessly. And then, uh, you know, from there, they can see where other businesses could benefit from this type of technology. So thought that was some pretty good news. I also happen to see this guy's from Ripple partner Flutterwave in Africa. They've just launched the first hotel on POS solution for Africa's hospitality industry. So check this out. This innovation, uh, innovative system is set to transform how hotels in Nigeria and across Africa are managed, providing a simple cost-effective solution for hotel owners and managers. The partnership is the first of its kind and enables uh, something called 9jahotel.com. That's the uh, the company, 9jahotel.com. They're award-winning uh, room status system to run seamlessly on Flutterwave's smart POS terminals. Now, what this is, uh, you can uh, manage it remotely. Basically, it is a way for uh, for business owners, hotel managers to, uh, to manage uh, all all departments of the hotel with a digital tool, okay? So various hotel departments such as reservations, housekeeping, laundry, accounting, and more. The project manager, she highlighted that this is an all-in-one solution and it's ready, already helping hotels by streamlining their operations, improving service efficiency, uh, reducing fraud, and minimizing revenue losses. So running on, uh, chances are, some type of blockchain technology there. We know Flutterwave is a Ripple partner and we know they have been expanding. We know they have been uh, very successful uh, in the African continent and it's looking like they are also entering new verticals similar to what uh, we, you know, we were hearing from Airwallex over here and many other Ripple partnered companies as well. So, you know, I get the sense these guys partner with Ripple. They realize again, boy, look at how great this technology is. You know, we've kind of mastered cross-border payments or we can at least do as much as we can do with cross-border payments in the region of the world that we function in. And, uh, and so now what's our next step? Okay, what's our next goal? So what they end up doing is they find, uh, you know, other business models that they can leverage, that they can perfect, and then they can run with it, right? In these, uh, you know, in these regions of the world where we're still seeing that emergence of technology occur. So these guys are the first on the ground running. Great news from Flutterwave and from Airwallex. And guys, that is just, you know, a small piece of the puzzle. Chad Steingraber bringing this to our attention. Here's your India Ripple Partner bingo card. Boom goes the dynamite. And you know, India is part of the BRICS. Nation, countries, and just check this out. Indian digital banking ecosystem. This was as of uh, last month, September 2024. And uh, just off the top, I can name a dozen Ripple partners here. Uh, I'm not going to name them all, obviously, but, you know, just to just to name a few. Phone PE, there's Finastra down here, Tata Consulting Group. Uh, of course, the Indian tech stack here, including UPI, AWS, another large one, uh, Paytm, Phone PE again. Oh, yeah, they're, they're listed uh, twice down here. Who else do we have? Uh, TCS down in here. Of course, we got Temenos, we got FIS, we've got uh, many others uh, like DBS Bank, HSBC, Paytm, uh, many other companies. And I, I know I'm missing some Kotak Mahindra, of course, Yes Bank, ICICI Bank, guys, tons 
of Ripple partners here. Uh, and so this is uh, the framework that is making up the Indian banking sector. We know from uh, former uh, reports and former announcements that Ripple does have about 80% of the Indian country when it comes to their tech and finance. So they are one of the BRICS nations. And, uh, you know, as we emerge into this new financial system, we're going to start to see more adoption. We've been getting more news about the BRICS nations and how they are uh, modernizing, uh, you know, how they're looking to create a new currency. Cross-border payments 2024. This is from ISO 2022, okay? Fintech serving the emerging market for providing greenfield opportunities for value creation. And when you take a look at this, you can see more Ripple partners as part of this cross-border payment landscape. Uh, so this is com uh, competitive positioning across all corridors. So Ripple partners that include CorePay, Onaf, Freak, TerraPay, Thunes, Neom, uh, Payoneer, Airwallex, as we'd uh, mentioned in the past, eBury is another one. And you can see some of these countries, uh, some of the more exotic countries that are uh, partnering, that are participating in this. Also, if we just take a look down here from ISO 2022, let's do its tweet from uh, 16 hours ago, cross-border payments in 2024. So another slide here just demonstrating what this was looking like in 2020 and 2021 into 2022, uh, 2023 and beyond, guys. Now we're in 2024, and I think this is a, a bit of an older slide here, but you can see many, uh, many of these Ripple partners are located on this chart as well, like eBerry, Bexis, TerraPay, Visa. We've got Airwallex on here as well. Uh, Remitly, we've got Thunes, eBerry again. Uh, Neom again, Wirecard. So this is just one example of how we are going to see, uh, well, how we're going to see that web really kind of expand and how we're going to see more XRP adoption down the road. So I wanted to thank ISO 2022. Let's do it uh, for pointing that out. Oh, I guess I should mention this too. Uh, you know, talking about India specifically, the fact that we are seeing uh, 80 percent or 80, yeah, 80 percent roughly of India leveraging the XRP ledger or at least RippleNet technology. Uh, and even though they're not the biggest economy in the world, guys, they are the fastest growing economy, growing by 7.2 percent year on year. So you compare that to the biggest economies like the United States, only 2.1 percent and even China only at 3 percent. India is growing by leaps and bounds. So I think a very important point to make there. Now, Colin Brown, bringing this to our attention, CEO Brad Garlinghouse did state what we're doing every day is essentially taking over SWIFT bit by bit. This is an older video, but I thought I'd bring it to your attention just to remind you how important this process is. I think what we're doing and executing on a day-by-day -day -day basis is in fact taking over SWIFT in that you know, we've now signed up you know, well over 100 banks. Some of the largest SWIFT-enabled banks in the world are now using Ripple's technology. Uh, I mean, just last week we saw a, a, a remittance company who's using Ripple's technology. They reduced the price per transaction to their consumers from $20 per transaction to $2 per transaction, and they saw an 800% increase in usage overnight. That's the type of dynamic that SWIFT isn't able to support that we're able to address right now. And so again, this is from a few years ago. Swift has, I mean, to give them credit, Swift has modernized since then. But guys, Ripple has already had the head start. Look at all the connections they have to the traditional financial system. This was uh, retweeted out by the BitBoy, Ben Armstrong here, who uh, doesn't really agree with Ito Farina's uh, point here. He says that is not going to happen. Basically, what Ito Farina here says is saying uh, the only possible outcome is that XRP is going to be the world reserve currency. We'll just take a look at some of these connections. Rosie Rios, uh, of course, all these people are connected to Ripple in one way, shape or form. But uh, with the United States government, when it comes to the Treasury and the Fed, uh, we've got Craig Phillips here as well. Uh, some other people uh, connected to the White House. I can't really make out these logos, but I know they're all uh, American agencies. Uh, Swift, of course, we've got uh, uh, Marcus Trecher and Marjan, um, Marjan Delantine uh, connected to Swift. Did work for Ripple. Eventually, Jess Chang here also connected to um, to the uh, Treasury, did I say? Not only that, the IMF. Uh, then we have other connections. Chris Larson to the World Economic Forum. So, you know, an interesting spreadsheet here just uh, demonstrating how these connections actually have more of a table here demonstrating how many of these people, how many of these, uh, whether they have worked for Ripple, been on the board of directors for Ripple or have some kind of connection to Ripple in one way, shape or form, how they are connected to not just U.S. agencies, but also to the global system of financial inclusion. What BitBoy has a problem with is this. He says BRICS plus pay uh, will be the next reserve currency. So he's saying it's not going to be XRP. I uh, tend to agree with him. I don't think XRP is necessarily going to be the world reserve currency, although that could have been where they started off. I think the system, uh, well, there's going to be many moving parts. Illuminati Bob posted this just recently. This is an older clip of Yuval Noah Harari. Now he is, uh, well, part of the WEF. And here's what he said about the financial system in 20 years to come, guys, that's not that far off. So even if you have a law that says that you must be given access 
to understand why the bank rejected your request for a loan, you will not be able to understand. Why? Because humans make decisions on the basis of a few salient points. Like if I'm a human banker and your request comes to me, so I look at your data and usually I will make decision on the basis of three or four salient factors. Like uh, your previous credit history, and maybe if I'm a racist, based on your skin color. Now, an algorithm doesn't work like that. An algorithm is able to take into account thousands and thousands of data points, each with a very small weight. And if you ask why the algorithm rejected my request for a loan, so the bank can print out millions of pages of, of data and tell you, that's why the algorithm went over all this and calculated that you are not credit worthy. And our minds just can't understand this type of decision making. And it can be on a personal level. It can also be on the level of an entire country that to decide whether to raise or lower interest rate, for example. It will not be done by a human banker or finance minister. It will be done by an AI. Already today, how many people really understand the financial system? I guess less than 1% of people really understand finance. In 20 years, the number of people who will be able to understand the global financial system will be exactly zero. So zero people will understand the financial system in 20 years because they're going to be putting it all on blockchain and the algorithms are going to be so complicated that we will not even be able to understand. We're not going to be able to comprehend why we did not get that loan. Uh, they're going to be looking at all these different factors. This is obviously going to incorporate uh, DLT technology, blockchain systems, uh, smart contracts probably, and new types of currencies as well. I wanted to show you this from Black Swan Capitalist. He recently interviewed Martin Armstrong, top economist Martin Armstrong does warn that the UN and the IMF plan to replace the dollar with a new global currency. There will be economic reset and civil unrest ahead when Trump wins. Curiously, the IMF and the World Bank parent group of the UN are working with Ripple and XRP. Need I remind you guys, let's just go back to this chart over here. Look at all these agencies, including the IMF, the World Economic Forum, even SWIFT, and many branches of the US government, all working with Ripple. Here's what Martin Armstrong had to say. And it is unfortunate uh, this video was uh, removed from the uh, from the platform that it was playing on. So I'm just going to read the subtitles here and you guys can find this clip. This clip is still on X. It goes as such. Look, uh, this is the way things are. Uh, this is the agenda. Uh, this is the theory of the, you know, the government that is one for all, all for one. And it's been around a long time. Uh, the one world currency, uh, yeah. And the one world payment system already created uh, a digital currency, the IMF did, and uh, we're keeping it. And, you know, they're keeping it behind the curtain is what he says. Uh, but the pitch is that it will eventually replace the U.S. dollar. So it sounds like this is supposed to replace the dollar, guys. And looky, looky what I just noticed here when you click on uh, Versan's link from Black Swan Capitalist. Looks like this video has been removed. So does Martin Armstrong know something that they do not want us to know? I mean, the connections are clear, guys. If XLM and XRP are the chosen cryptocurrencies, well, I mean, they are considered stable coins by the World Bank. Could we be in the best investment of a generation? And for more information on what I'm doing, you can follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel. This is not my first rodeo. And so I want to share my journey with you. It is only $5 a month, but that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.